When you were in history class, you might have heard of someone named Louis Pasteur. I remember reading books about him and stories about him and how he revolutionized healthcare in our world today. Now, what Louis Pasteur discovered was something that has changed healthcare and has made longevity and us able to resist and fight things that people died from for centuries. This has been absolutely life-changing. However, if we don't understand exactly how this works, it could be life-changing in a negative way. So let's dive into this. This thing that he found and that he provided the world with was antibiotics. Now these are absolutely miraculous. If you have a bacterial infection that's going out of control in your system and your body, it will save your life. But let's talk about what that antibiotic does to your system in general. What that antibiotic does is kill bacteria. Now we know there's two types of bacteria. We can classify them simply as that. There are the good guys and the bad guys. The good guys are bacteria that live with us. They live in our gut, they live in, in our entire digestive tract, which extends all the way from the sinuses all the way down to the other end. They live on our skin. They're part of us. And those bacteria often facilitate metabolic processes that we can't do for ourselves. So those bacteria help us stay well. They help us digest food. They help us fight bad bacteria. They do so many good things. And it's interesting, they're really kept in a balance and they help manage other microbes in the body as well, like yeasts. So if you have a certain number of bacteria, they keep the yeasts at a certain healthy level as well. So what happens if we take an antibiotic that goes on a killing spree and kills everything in sight? It's killing the good bacteria along with the bad ones. Now it's keeping us alive and those antibiotics sometimes are absolutely essential to save lives. However, in some situations, they're going to lead to a lot of other problems that can lead to health issues that will plague you for years to come. What is that? If those good bacteria are killed, it affects all of those systems that depend on those good bacteria to function well. So again, that goes back to gut function. That goes back to our immune system. All of those things require help from those good bacteria. If they're all gone, we're gonna struggle and suffer. The same with managing those other microbes. If all the bacteria are gone, those yeasts are going to have a heyday. All of a sudden, they're gonna take over and it shows up as candida infections and all sorts of things that you're gonna now have to fight in a different way. So what can you do about this problem of killing off those good bacteria. If you absolutely need to take an antibiotic, we're gonna talk about when and where you do. If you absolutely do need to take an antibiotic, you should be taking probiotics along with it. Now, is the antibiotic gonna kill some of those probiotics? Yes. But are some gonna escape and get by? Yes. And you're gonna take them after the course of antibiotics is done. You can also use probiotic food. What are those? Those are foods that have natural levels of probiotics, like fermented foods, kimchi, sauerkraut, sourdough bread. All of these things have natural probiotics in them. Be eating those along with antibiotic usage. So you can just be adding them back while you're killing. Now, sometimes this is a necessity. You just have to do it to be able to save a life, to be able to fight that bacterial infection. After that antibiotic usage, you're going to need to continue to take probiotics for two years, most likely. Research shows that that antibiotic effect will be with you for at least two years. Probiotics are interesting though. You need to, to mix them up a little bit. So I suggest using something for about three months and then changing brands, changing what's actually in that probiotic and trying that for another three months and switching it up you want to repopulate this biome, your system, with a broad spectrum of good bacteria. So switch it up and add different ones over time. 
Do you need to use that antibiotic though? You know, I grew up in the era where we had that little pink bottle that we would shake up of amoxicillin. My dad was a dentist, so he was able to purchase this in bulk. So we would have these bottles with the dried amoxicillin powder in the bottom. And anytime anybody sneezed or coughed, we'd fill that bottle with water, we'd shake it up, and we would start taking that pink, disgusting, bubblegum tasting liquid. Did we need it for every sniffle? No. Let's talk about what we really need it for. First of all, a lot of the illness that we suffer with just, you know, as the seasons come and go, are actually viral. Well, antibiotics do nothing for viruses. This is why the recommendation for ear infections has been lately that antibiotics aren't very helpful because it's often a viral infection. Sinus infections, very often viral or fungal. So an antibiotic does nothing for it. If you have a cold that you know it's just gonna go away in a few days, don't take an antibiotic. It might speed it up by a day, but it's not worth the fallout for years. Don't take something that you know you're gonna be able to get over. Now, if you're in the hospital, if you have a life-threatening disease, antibiotics are your lifeline, and please take them. But just be conscious about, is this infection that I have actually bacterial? Is it something that's gonna threaten my life? If those answers are no, then you don't need an antibiotic. If the answer is yes, then please take one. So we've learned about how to hopefully mitigate the damage or help the damage if you have to take an antibiotic. We've also learned about when you should take an antibiotic. These things are very important to know. Now what do you do if you're on the tail end and you really have had an antibiotic, you needed it, but you're suffering? Well, I want you to check out my gut health guide and my gut health supplements because you need to determine where is your gut health currently. I want you to take my baking soda test to see is your gut even functioning? If it's not, I'm gonna walk you through how to repair it, how to rebuild it, and how to return to health. There's answers for all of it. The important part is that you understand what you're choosing, what you're taking, and what to do about it. Check out below for links in the description on supplements, on the gut health guide, on the baking soda test, on everything that I've talked about. Look for links below. Make sure to subscribe. All of this information can come to you for free. Check it out. I'm just here to help you live well.